last song of this last dance, was it everything you wanted it to be? It was more, man. You know, it was everything and more. Um, you know, you don't, you don't write a script like this. Well, maybe some other, <laughs> some people write scripts like this, but they I, win Oscars. Yeah. yeah, they win Oscars. So this is an Oscar-worthy script for Last Dance for my last season. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything more. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's on <all> point. <laughs> Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. But if we don't physically make a decision how we're going to live, then we'll show up like everybody else because the human mind is not going to make you happy. This brain of yours won't do it. You have to direct it. And there's no worse fate than to achieve everything and not be fulfilled. Your passion, you're gonna have this tremendous energy, it's sustainable energy, but momentum requires you always do the next thing to keep the momentum going. And the reason you get yourself in a passionate place is so that you change your life and the only thing that changes your life is making a decision. This is the year of the comeback. You don't know the feeling of training. Every single day. Putting your body through pain. Pushing your brain to its limits. The only person that will give you the strength to rise up and be who you are truly meant to be is you. It's that lion inside your chest. They're saying, I won't let my career end this way. I'm going to be great and better than anything you've ever seen. I'm coming back for everything they told me I wanted. I'm going to show the world that whatever is broken can truly be fixed. Now, if you better get some, you better get your money back to come back. I remember we were playing against the Lakers, Tom, and we were out here in L.A. And, um, you know, like, I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at 7. I was like, you know what? I'm going to come to the Staples Center because we're playing. This is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq, okay? This is this is like the championship Lakers. I was like, you know, I'm going to get there at 3 o'clock. I want to make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room and then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. So, you know, get in the car get to the gym, get there, and as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. You know, so I put my sneakers on, and you ever get lost in what you do, where you end up like, wait, it's been an hour and a half? Like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm here, I'm in it. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down, and of course, I still heard the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. He's, he was working out. For, like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant, <laughs> lazy. He's doing, like, game moves, you know? Um, I sit there, and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. I said, yeah, fair enough. Another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. 
and he's like, it's, don't hold, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not saying I right. dislike you as a person. You just, you inspire me to be better. Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said, I need to start doing more. What do you do when you're not the only one that wants to make a million dollars in your company? You're not the only one that wants to be the president. You're not the only one that wants to be the CEO. What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You gotta outgrind them. You gotta get up earlier. You gotta stay up later. You gotta execute and you gotta go from seven to 120. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're going to have to get up. The longer you're going to have to stay up. The bigger your dream is, the more effort you're going to have to put in. For those of you who raise your hand and put up 70%, you'll never see it. You'll never see it. For those of you who are 70%, 70% beast mode, 30% gazelle. That's just enough for that other person. I'll do you. That's just, that's just enough for... Listen to me, that's just enough for the other person who wants just what you want. The mama mentality simply means trying to be the best version of yourself. That's what the mentality means. It means every day, you know, you're trying to become better. If if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight. Right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions. Right now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four, you go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so so blah, blah, blah. now you're back at it again, nine to eleven, right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four. Right? And so now you do that. And as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, it doesn't matter what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up. No oh, excuses. I was working 14 hour days, six days a week. I was putting a toll on my body. And I got a good look at myself on camera one day. And I thought to myself, people are paying money to see me. If I'm nowhere near the top of my game, then I'm cheating those that support me the most.